This video is made possible by Francisco Herrera Jr. at the Honda Superstore of Joliet. Francisco is a longtime car enthusiast who is dedicated to finding the perfect vehicle for you. Email him at the address on the screen or contact him with his information found in the description below. What's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2019 Hyundai Velocitor N. Up front is a 2.0 liter turbocharged inline four and down below is a six speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Velocitor N because I've been trying to track down one of these cars for a very, very long time. And so I finally got my grubby little hands on this Velocitor N. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, zackpradle.com, where you can check out these stickers. I have two sticker packs available, a retro sticker pack and a big freaking bottle sticker. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that 2.0 liter turbocharged inline four under the hood. Well, it makes 250 horsepower, which pretty good amount of horsepower, especially for a little hatchback like this. Now, you could also get the performance package, which raised it about 25 extra horsepower to 275 horsepower, if that's something that you wanted, but this is just the 250. Fighting for traction on cold tires. <laughs> But man, this thing sounds great. Like I said, paired to its six speed manual transmission, I absolutely love the feeling of it. I think it has a really solid throw. It's a little bit light, but I am not going to complain about it because it's a good feeling manual transmission made in the last three years. So I am just going to accept it and love it for what it is. The clutch is nice and light. However, it does have a nice hydraulic feel. And the reason I say that is because I drove a Volkswagen GLI and the clutch felt like it wasn't connected to anything. It just felt like an on off switch where this still feels nice and tight. This thing is quick. <laughs> this thing is definitely quick. However, it's more than just that. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but I love the crackles of the exhaust. This has to be one of the best exhausts fitted to a hatchback. I love it. Shifting through the gears feels amazing. I am, I am really, really impressed with this car. I really, truly am. And with the amount of cars I drive here on the channel, that's not an easy task to do. And <laughs> oh man. Last but not least, the Velocitor N is front wheel drive. However, something with the driving feel, I do want to talk about the suspension because the Velocitor N gets upgraded and actually adjustable suspension, which we'll talk about the settings later, but it is a pretty harsh ride. I know Illinois is not famed for having their nice roads, but even on just regular streets, I am being tossed around just a little bit. And that's even in normal mode, which we do have sport mode for the suspension, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. With that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have some physical gauges and a screen. On the left is my tachometer with coolant temperature in it. And on the right is my speedometer with fuel inside of it. Something cool about the tachometer is that there's these little yellow bars when you first start the car as a sort of softer red line. Those slowly go away like the E46 BMW once the car warms up so you know you can rev it all the way out. I really, really like that sort of 
adaptable and changing tachometer. Makes the car feel a little bit more alive. In the center, I do get a very typical Hyundai little screen. I'll cycle through some of the things you can look at. It's not anything crazy. However, I like that at least I get a little screen in the gauge cluster. Something else is that I also get a shift light up at the top, which is really, really cool. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my voice commands, mode, volume, skip track, and phone options. And on the right, I have my cruise control settings. However, there are these two added giant blue, this light blue color, which you'll see a lot throughout this car. These are for my drive modes and my race mode. So the drive modes, I have normal, sport, and eco. But then if I hit the checkered flag button, this puts me into end mode, which has auto rev matching. You could do launch control. It turns off traction control. This is your fun button and I really, really love it. The auto rev matching is a great, great feature. The overall steering wheel itself, although it does say N at the bottom, is very typical Hyundai, and that's going to be a battle that you'll see throughout the interior of the Velocitor N. Some stuff is very cool, very unique to the Velocitor N, and some stuff is just very basic baseline Hyundai. Speaking of which, off to the left, I have my gauge dimmer switch and then a bunch of dead switches. On the door, I have my power mirrors, power windows, and power locks. Interestingly enough, you'll only see one rear window button. We'll explain why a little bit later on, but if you know Velocitors, you know that. But moving into the center, I have a very nice infotainment screen with some really cool options in there. So let's pull over and talk about it. All right, so let's talk the infotainment system here in the Velocitor. And first of all, this does have an infinity sound system, which is very nice. And we get our traditional Hyundai stuff in here. Nothing really too crazy. The voice memo is cool. Voice commands and setup and aux and music and things like that is pretty nice. However, if we scroll back here, we have N mode, which is so cool. I love it so much. So this will show me all my stuff. You can see power and things that I'm making and and whatnot, but I can go over here to custom and this is where I can customize my driving. So I have the engine set to sport plus, but I could set it down into normal or just regular sport. Provides faster engine response. I love that they give you like little reasonings behind what you're changing, which a lot of cars don't do. They're like, oh, sport mode. Well, what is sport mode? Well, for this, it provides faster engine response. Put it rev matching, faster RPM control for aggressive shifting. Very cool. You can also do the ELSD, so you can control the LSD up front. Improves cornering performance and stability. That's sweet. Exhaust note, you can do normal sport and sport plus. Provides an aggressive exhaust sound. Now I know exactly what that does. I can also go to chassis and I can do suspension, so normal sport and sport plus. Like I said at the top of the video, even in normal, it is kind of aggressive suspension. We put it up into Sport Plus, maximum suspension stiffness for best possible handling. You can also do the steering, normal Sport or Sport Plus, suitable for daily driving, maximizes road feel, increases road feel. I love these little descriptions. This means the world to me. Improves handling of the car. Improves performance by allowing some oversteer. Traction control off, yes disables the stability control. Let's leave that on normal because it is starting to rain today. And I get this sweet performance timer, G-Force, things like that. I can look at the turbo. I can actually look at this last 30 minutes. Now I've been parked here doing the exterior video, so I haven't done any PSI, but you could pull over, say, hey, you just did a pull, pull over and be like, oh, interesting. I did this, I did that. I can go into torque here. Same thing with the torque and same thing with the power as well. Take a look at my G-forces. Look at the G-forces, very, very cool. Performance timer, acceleration, all of these things. Just so, so cool. This is a huge, awesome part of the Velocitor N that I absolutely love. Being a geek, loving numbers and patterns and statistics, I think this is the coolest thing in the whole entire world. Also, here's the backup camera. One thing I do love is that when you turn the wheel, it turns the lines on the camera. Not super high resolution, but pretty much what I would expect out of a car like this. It's not great, but it's not bad either, and it definitely functions. Down below that infotainment system, I do have my radio buttons. Again, this is very typical Hyundai. My favorites in volume and seek track and all that sort of stuff. And then I have the climate control. Sadly, I do not get dual zone climate. However, that's okay. I have fan speed off to the right, auto and temperature off to the left, where to send it in the middle, pretty standard stuff. 
Then I have a 12 volt outlet, a USB charger, as well as my USB and aux in for the radio, a big cubby for storage, and then of course my shifter. I think the shifter looks and feels fantastic. Like I said, the actual shifting feel looks good, but also in my hand, it has a nice weight to it and I'm really happy with it. Off to the left is my traction control off, but then more dead switches again, sort of showing the fact that this is just a Hyundai. Down below, we do have cup holders and our handbrake. Don't care about the handbrake, but let's do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Velocitor N. And unfortunately, it doesn't pass. Most cars in this segment don't. So it's pretty much par for the course in terms of the big friggin' bottle. To finish out that center area, I do have a center console, a little bit of storage, and then we gotta talk about the seats. There's a couple things I wanna note about the seats. First of all, the seat belts are very, very cool. This is like Velocitor N blue. Now you can get the car in this color, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on, but you'll see these blue accents throughout, and I love the fact that they actually match the seat belts to that color as well. Really, really like that. But the one thing I wanna talk about the seats, yes, they are a little bit more aggressive than normal Velocitor seats, that's definitely super nice. However, they're not as aggressive as Honda Civic Type R seats. And we'll be talking about the Civic Type R a little bit later on. But for me, a bigger guy, I like these seats better because the Civic Type R seats are actually almost a little too skinny for me where I'm a big wide man. So I actually prefer these seats, but if you're smaller than me, which odds are you are, you'll probably enjoy the Civic Type R seats better than this. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2019 Hyundai Velocitor and a couple of things to note back here. As I'll show you getting in, I bopped the back of my neck. This door is shaped very, very oddly. It's very small. The window is very small. They can't even fit the window sticker fully on it. It's not very ergonomic. I don't like being back here. I feel like I'm in the gulag back here. I don't get a whole lot of light back here. I'm not very comfortable. I kind of have to sit sideways because sitting up, my head is hitting the ceiling. This is a huge downside of the Velocitor N as opposed to the Ford Focus RS or the Honda Civic Type R. The back seats are really not where it's at. And I have two front doors, but only one back door for the Velocitor. The driver's side does not get a rear door, which is very strange to me. Very, very strange. I don't know why Hyundai does this, but they do, and that's how the Velocitor has always been. It's kind of like this weird quirk of the Velocitor. But what I would do is I would fold these seats completely flat to utilize more cargo space, which speaking of which, let's hop around back and look at the trunk and the cargo room. So around the back of the Velocitor, and you actually pop it from right here, and it is a hatchback, which is really nice. You could also put down the back seats if you want. However, as you'll notice, this hatch isn't super big and it's not super long either. So with the Focus RS, Honda Civic Type R, and maybe even the four-door GTI, you're gonna have a little bit more room in the back, but this is still a hatchback, still very usable, still very livable. I'm not saying the space in here isn't great, but the opening itself isn't the most spatially conscious, I'll say. But then again, this car only has a door on that side, not that side, so... Ugh. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and the color red is an interesting choice for this car because all of the Velocitor N vehicles have red accents down at the bottom unless you get the car in red, of which then the accents are black. So the black little fins down at the bottom are just black because this car is red. So good luck finding new ones. But I love the look of it. I love the aggressive new end parts that they put on it, like the side skirts, the wing on the back. And actually I'll cut to a clip here. You could see through the front bumper. There's actually some air deflecting going on, which is really, really cool. And overall, I love the look of it, even with the fact that it is a three door, which is very strange. I think it overall looks great, functions really well and I'm very happy with the exterior of it. But now let's get to my final thoughts here on the 2019 Hyundai Velocitor N. Well, I love this car. No, 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 I really, truly love this car. It is fantastic. I am loving my experience in here and I was hopeful that it would be good and honestly, my expectations have been beat. It handles really well. Yes, you have to compromise with a harsh ride on the street, but it handles really well. It's fun to drive. That sound, I think the sound of the exhaust is my favorite part of this car. Something I never thought I would say out of a Hyundai. And so would I take this over a Honda Civic Type R? I don't know. That's all gonna come down to personal preference. I might take the Type R just because it has four full doors, but that's literally it. I think this sounds great, drives great, 
feels great and is a wonderful blast of excitement, but there is one fault with it. Not many people bought these. In 2019, when this car was released, this is the first model year, Hyundai sold 2,200 of them, which is a fair amount, but considering that the Volkswagen GTI sold five times that amount in the same year, it has me a little worried. I think over the next decade, we've certainly seen it in the last decade, Hyundai is really going to change in the public eye. People always thought that Hyundais are sort of budget Korean cars, but every time I talk to someone about Hyundai or Kia, the same seven words always come out. Man, Hyundai's really stepping up their game. And it's true. Things have changed. And so why do I think this car didn't sell well? It's because of the badge up at the front, not the N badge, the H. But man, I, I hope things turn around. I really, really do. I wish Hyundai nothing but the best because man. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this car is good. It's so good. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Francisco at the Honda Superstore of Joliet. This is one of their used vehicles. If you are interested in a Velocitor N, please let Francisco know. Or if you want a Civic Type R, please let him know as well or any other Honda product. He's absolutely awesome. I've been trying to track down one of these cars for so, so long, and I'm so glad we were finally able to make it work. His information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below. So please go check him out. Helping him is helping me, and it is greatly appreciated. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.